Hey, it's Mike from The Mike Wagner Show. Thanks for tuning in to The Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM. If you're interested in sponsoring my show, you can send me an email to themikewagnershow at gmail.com, or you could also donate to the uh, podcast. Just go to the Donate Listen site, and um, you can also donate whatever you like. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. For those who are interested, Anchor can give you everything you need in one place for free, which means right from your phone or computer. We've got creation tools. It allows you to record and edit podcasts so it sounds great. And they'll distribute the podcast for you so you can be heard everywhere. Spotify, Apple, Google, many more. And you can make money from the podcast with no minimum listenership. So download the Anchor app for free or go to Anchor FM to get started. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers Designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress, and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds, whether big, small, established, or startup, impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike. Hey, it's Mike. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all you need. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-960. That's 1-800-303-960. Or email at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention Mike Titan and Joe, Tamper Sonic, your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with a wonderful lady living in Los Angeles at the Cedars, which feels like a hotel, almost like her own personal little studio. She's an iconic fashion designer. She was born and raised in southern China and now living in Los Angeles. She's the owner of Su Wong Universe, and she also brought the haute couture to the masses at affordable prices. And she also does dress designs with temporary twists based on old highway glamour style. And live, ladies and gentlemen, from the beautiful Cedars, and it makes me want to stay almost like a hotel, checks in the mail, and I'm going to send it out to her live, ladies and gentlemen, from beautiful Los Angeles, Sue Wong. Sue, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Mike, you know, and audience. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really deeply honored to uh, be on your show. And uh, no, the hotel, <laughs> the Cedars is not a hotel. It is my personal iconic home. If you want me to, I can tell you a little bit of, about its glorious and illustrious history. Um, it was conceived in uh, the 20s. It actually took about five years to build. So it was started in 1921, finished in 1926. And it was the, um, you know, the... Uh, 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 child, the creative child, uh, you know, that was birthed by uh, a visionary French artist by the name of Maurice Tunier, who came from Paris uh, to uh, 
Los Angeles to Hollywood at the height of the golden, uh, silent golden era of Hollywood. And it sits on, in the hills of Hollywood East, which is also known as Los Feliz. And, uh, you know, you had really iconic people living here, such as the Cecil B. DeMille. The Cecil B. DeMille mansion was recently purchased by um, Angelina Jolie. Wow. And uh, and uh, a part portion of that property was lopped off by Cecil B. DeMille and given to his best friend, Charlie Chaplin. And uh, so anyway, uh, this uh, visionary French director who worked for MGM Studios, basically, um, this was his creative vision. And he brought in artisans from Italy, from Germany, from France, and then he also collaborated with the studio set designers to really create this incredible, uh, unique environment. Um, I consider it to be more of a museum than a home, and it really definitely is a temple of old golden Hollywood. And, uh, you know, I can really tell you some of the illustrious characters who had lived here and I'm just really, you know, sort of, uh, you know, uh, the contemporary mistress of all of these iconic superstars, uh, both in film and cinema and in um, music. I mean, you know, we, we have rock gods who lived here. So let me just really tell you from the very, very beginning, it's also known as the Norma Talmadge estate. And Norma Talmadge was the preeminent movie star of the silent era. And uh, so uh, she lived here with her husband, Joseph Shank, who happened to have founded 20th Century Fox Studios. And they would entertain their best friends here, which included Charlie Chaplin, uh, Mary Pickford, and uh, D Douglas Fairbanks. So later on, these best friends would really go on to, uh, you know, they founded U uh, United Artists Studios together. So um, this is a really incredible place of legend and lore. I mean, you know, you, you had uh, people like Bogey and Bacall living here. Uh, this was the original Hollywood and Wilshire Boulevard in the old historical Wilshire Boulevard uh, district um, was where you really had all the stars really hanging out in places like Perino's or the Coconut Grove inside the Ambassador Hotel. So, you know, it, it, it's really a, a place that's teeming with history. So are there ghosts and spirits living in the Cedars? I would say definitely yes, because uh, my housekeeper has seen three of them already. <laughs> that makes you wonder who are the ghosts. <laughs> well, you know, um, I feel really privileged and honored to really be at the Cedars as her current mistress and uh, her current Chatelaine, if you will, um, because this is a magical vortex where so many famous people have lived here. And I was really told by an energy worker friend of mine who walked in and immediately said, this really is a magical vortex. And always over the decades, famous people, you know, the accomplished greats, have always been drawn to the energy of the cedars because it sits on this very magical hill, which happens to be a power point of Los Angeles. So uh, th there's an energy that runs through the uh, cedars and so many creative energies have really, you know, lived here, come through here. And I'm just really very honored to really be a part of that creative lineage. So let me just really tell, uh, tell you from the beginning. So Maurice Tunier, who was a visionary uh, screenwriter and director for MGM, uh, built it. And, uh, you know, so he decided to really sell it uh, before it was completely finished. And uh, the reason why uh, he was, you know, his wife in Paris was threatening to divorce him. He got into a tiff with Louis B. Mayer and Samuel Goldwyn. So he basically sold uh, the property, which used to be on 15 glorious acres with, you know, the main gate uh, right at Los Feliz. And uh, so the house really sits on top of this 
uh, hill. And so um, it just really had terrace fountains and gorgeous gardens. There was a you know, lake at the bottom of the hill. It was just really, you know, she was considered to have been the grand dame of her day. So after Norma Talmadge and Joe Schenck lived here, uh, I believe Errol Flynn lived here. And after Errol Flynn, Howard Hughes lived here. And you can just even look it up on the internet. And it just really showed uh, this address as his primary residence in the early 30s. I, I, remember, I remember something about him just having an address like that. He was just so re reclusive, elusive, and, you know, just eccentric. And I can imagine having Howard Hughes, you know, this address, that address, and he could just make up his own address. I mean, he was just... No, I think the reclusiveness and the eccentricity came much later. This was in the early 30s when he was really, you know, trying to make it as a movie producer. And he was dating all these glamorous movie stars back in those days. So that was really long before he kind of got very weird and eccentric, you know. Uh, so Howard Hughes lived here. And he used to love playing the grand piano in my solarium. And the guy who delivered the piano to him was none other than a struggling opera, um, you know, singer by the name of Mario Lonzo, who eventually became very famous, as you know. Well, so then, yes. So so then the uh, the horror star um, who played uh, Count Dracula, Bella Lugosi, lived here. And because he lived here, Johnny Depp, decades later, lived here to vibe in on Bela Lugosi for his uh, role uh, as Ed Wood in that movie, Ed Wood, by uh, uh, Tim Burton. And if you remember, Martin Landau, you know, gave an award-winning performance as Dracula or as, uh, you know, Bela Lugosi, actually, um, in that um, uh, movie. And he won the Best Supporting actress for, for the whole year. So then, you know, basically Marilyn Monroe used to really love uh, partying here. Um, and then in the 60s, it became this really incredible, iconic rock palace. So you had, you know, all the super rock gods living here from Jim Morrison to Jimi Hendrix to Lou Reed and the Velvet Underground. Um, Andy Warhol used to really stay here uh, when he uh, came to visit from the East Coast, because don't forget, the Velvet Underground uh, was officially, unofficially his, his uh, band, uh, you know, with Lou Reed. And uh, then you had Bob Dylan living here. You had uh, Van Morrison living here. You had um, the Rolling Stones and Brian Jones living here. Uh, you had John Phillips of the Mamas and the Papas living here. And then in 1968, uh, the iconic movie Easy Rider was filmed here. And so Dennis Hopper and, and, uh, and uh, Peter Fonda lived here. And as a matter of fact, all the New Orleans scene, scenes from uh, the movie Easy Rider was filmed between the foyer, the uh, library, and uh, the uh, living room where you have the iconic columns, the gilded columns. So, so uh, they made that movie here. And I want to backtrack a little bit. Uh, part of the, you know, um, sort of the, the, one of the great uh, cinematic greats of all time was Sunset Boulevard. So Sunset Boulevard was, in fact, partially filmed here. And uh, remember, it really, you know, has some immortal lines like Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close up. That was from Sunset Boulevard. So that was Gloria Swanson's comeback. Uh, and she starred opposite a very hunky uh, William Holden. And in the end, she shoots him dead. If you remember when he, uh, you know, um, starts to leave her. So um and then uh, so they uh, had uh, Cecil B. DeMille uh, come in with a cameo role to entice her to come downstairs where she was really, you know, in full delusional hallucinations and everything else. And so she saunters down the stairs and uh, she, uh, Cecil B. DeMille said, you know, lights, camera, action. So then she 
thinks that you know she's being filmed so she just really comes down the stairways and at the end she says mr demille i'm ready for my close-up now <laughs> <laughs> so, so so you know so that is a very iconic movie sunset boulevard so in part that was filmed here as well so the, the house has really so many you know iconic you know um personalities superstars musical royalty who lived here and uh so it's always attracted really the top of the line creative people and creative artists and uh, you know so i'm just really happy to really be her temporal steward that, that's amazing and i was joking earlier about the hotel part i know this is one of the best places and what you did to it was amazing we'll get into that in just a minute but first well, thank you <laughs> First, well, I, I was told that I created a work of art within a work of art. In other words, you know, when I uh, bought the Cedars, probably close to 17 years ago, I knew that it was a, a stewardship. You know, it, it was uh, something that I had to be prepared for because it's an undertaking. When you buy a house of this nature, you're just really not buying an ordinary house you're really, you know, undertaking a piece of uh, history. It's, it's a, you know, a bona fide museum. And as a matter of fact, um, you know, part of my legacy in the future, um, you know, but I'm in the process of forming the Su Wong Legacy Foundation. And as a matter of fact, as my gift to the world, um, I intend to really bequeath this really beautiful temple and palace, because that's what it is. It really is a very regal palace. I intend to really bequeath this, you know, uh, and make this into a historical museum for future generations to enjoy. That is amazing. I took into it. We'll get to that in just one minute. But first, listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for early needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show, keep you here on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also, follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here at Icon designer sue wong here on the mike wagner show also taking on the project called the cedars it's a just a fantastic piece of work and um you know there was a lot of work that had to be done to it and um of course tell us about the what was that one moment that influenced you into um taking on the cedars and what kind of work did you do to make the cedars as is today well, I basically uh, took it, uh, you know, to, to from a haunted house, a haunted palace, and I really restored it to uh, its former grandeur with a patina of antiquity attached to it. So because I wanted to really, you know, keep the historical aspect, um, you know, I have antique gold as opposed to really bright brassy gold. So, you know, uh, none of the uh, frescoes, uh, the decoupage, the uh, gilded, uh, you know, uh, ceilings, uh, the stencil uh, hand-painted beams, none of it really had been touched for about 86 years before I really came into, uh, uh, you know, uh, b before I really became her um, chatelaine, so to speak. So I basically restored all the beauty of, of the cedars. And there, she's an extraordinary home because there's no home like it whatsoever in all of Hollywood. Like I said, she was considered to have been the grand dame of her heyday because, you know, I think I think what makes her really special and magical is the fact what? that other artists and then you know i'm i'm an artist myself so i came in and i restored all the beauty and then i proceeded to basically furnish her 
So I went shopping all over the world, you know, from uh, England to Morocco to, uh, you know, uh, Paris, where I found all the beautiful French Art Deco, for instance. And then I also, you know, uh, bought a pair of actual Bavarian throne chairs from the late Baroque era. And they were in a museum in, in Montreal, and then they got requisitioned to, uh, for sale in Paris. So the antique dealer that I was uh, working with found them for me, and they also cost me a king's ransom. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I just really thought that they were necessary to really anchor the, the living room. I mean, the living room is also known as the ballroom, and it's probably about 2,000 square wow. feet in the sense of, of many people's homes. Yes, the entire square footage of this home is about uh, 10,000 square feet. And I actually have a three house compound here because I have the cedars at uh, 10,000 square feet. Then I have the guest house, which uh, we're in right now, you know, because my accomplice uh, Freya lives here, Freya Pruitt. And then I bought the house next door to the Cedars, which used to be the staff quarters. And that was built in 1930. And I bought that originally from my mother. And she lived there the last nine years of her life. So I basically, you know, bought as many pieces of the Cedars was uh, that was available. And, uh, you know, so she used to be really this grand property, but uh, unfortunately over the years, a lot of the land was really sold off. So I probably have about three quarters of an acre uh, between the three houses at this point. Wow, that is amazing. Amazing. I don't know if I could handle three houses like that, but when you took on the cedars, what was like the most challenging part of restoring the cedars, like a room or... Uh, um, or just an event or something? What was like the most challenging part? Like, well, well fortunately, I hired Zoltan Pop and his, uh, you know, group, uh, his artisans. It's Artisan Restoration, uh, you know, is his company's name. And he is a trained academic um, artist from Budapest. And he uh, restored a lot of the palaces in Budapest, as well as historical buildings in Vienna. So he's really the top restoration expert here in Los Angeles. So I was able to solicit his help. And, you know, uh, there's all kinds of really academic things that you have to know, such as using what kinds of paint, what kinds of solvents, all of it. So, you know, I think just really keeping the historical aspect of it, the integrity of the history um, and, uh, you know, while just really pr uh, preserving what was really set forth almost a century ago. I mean, you know, 1921, this is 2020. So she's about to really have her, uh, you know, the, uh, the hundred year anniversary of her birth and uh She's a, I think of her as a gorgeous grand dame mm -hmm. and uh, she's very elegant. You know, uh, you don't really see homes like, like her uh, anymore. And uh, you s definitely, there's no other cedars because no other house really has the details. I've been inside this uh, Cecil B. DeMille mansion, which uh, Angelina bought about a year or, or a year and a half ago. It doesn't hold a matchstick to the candle of, of the cedars because there are no historical details. The sconces are just really ordinary, uh, contemporary. Uh, there aren't any really gorgeous ceilings that are ornate. Uh, it just, to me, looks like better homes and gardens. But this looks like a palazzo. And it is a, it is a palace. It is a palace. Uh, and how many bedrooms and bathrooms does this place have? It's got, uh, I believe, uh, six bedrooms and eight baths. Wow, that is amazing. And, 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 and 10,000 square feet. Nice, very nice. I think a lot of people are going to come over and check it out. So <laughs> we're going to. Well, it's not a museum yet. It's still my personal residence, but in the future it will be. I, I know. I was kidding. I was kidding about the part uh, coming in, but yes, a museum indeed. And uh, what do you have coming up? We'll talk about it in just a minute. But first, listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the MikeWagnerShow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios, 
Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for early needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at one 303 That's one 303 Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention to Mike White and Michelle get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studio, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike White Show can be heard on the MikeWhitenerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Whitener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, over 25 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Whitener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Whitener Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Whitener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with Icon. Desire from Los Angeles, Sue Wong here on Mike Wagner's show talking about the Cedars and the big project she's undertaken. And of course, in terms of the Cedars, you talked about coming up is the 100th anniversary of the Cedars. And um, what, what are your future plans coming up for 2020 and beyond besides the 100th anniversary? And what other projects do you plan on undertaking in the future? Well, you know, uh, I just really came off of a really glamorous uh, Hollywood Oscar party. I I hosted my own uh, star-studded Oscar party. And then whammo, the coronavirus hits. So everybody was really quarantined for about three months. And then I got really bored. And, I, you know, if I hadn't really become a, a fashion designer, I probably would have been an interior designer. I have, uh, you know, besides this three house compound of the Cedars, by the way, I have now, uh, you know, um, one, two, I have three other houses and, uh, you know, I, I have three that I live in. So I have the Cedars. I have my Malibu art house, which is nothing like the Cedars It's completely contemporary because I have a very extensive 200 piece art collection, modern art collection. So I showcase all of that there. And that house I basically designed from scratch, basically. You know, I did the architecture. I did uh, I designed my own gardens. I designed the interiors. Um so uh, that's really uh, the three houses I call, by the way, body, mind and spirit. So the Cedars to me is the corporeal uh, body of a beautiful woman, you know, and uh, the, the art house, uh, it's uh, spelled in the German manner, A R. T-H-A-U-S. So art house is really my realm of the mind because it's all modern art. You know, the um, furnishings are very sculptural, sort of um, uh, mid-century, mid-20th century with iconic uh, sculptural chairs, such as the egg chair, such as the womb chair. And, uh, you know, um, it's just very, very different. It's right in front of the ocean. It has a 180 degree white water in your face view because it's perched, you know, probably about 60 feet up on a cliff. And, uh, you know, it's just spectacular in a different sort of way. So it's very modernistic. And uh, all three houses are, you know, they're still me. They're just different aspects of me. And then the last house is really my spiritual sanctuary, which is really um, on the far flung um, east coast of the island of Maui. And, uh, you know, so I'm really in the middle of this beautiful, pristine uh, rainforest and um I have three properties there, but uh, the main uh, one where my house is right now, I wouldn't even call that the main one, but the one that my house is on is uh, on six and a half acres, and I designed all the gardens there. They're just really glorious and colorful with tropical flowers, and you know I have uh, probably two acres of bananas. That's probably on six and a half acres. And guess who my next door neighbor is? <laughs> my next door neighbor is the actor Woody Harrelson. So, <laughs> so when Woody and I are both in, you know, the hood together, we always get, you know, together and have dinner together. So he, he's, he's really quite a colorful character. And uh, then in addition to that, I have this incredible, magical 35 oceanfront acres, which I bought from um, the Nature Conservancy, and it had been donated by one of the members of the Mellon family, Cordelia Mellon May. 
And uh, so upon that, I'm going to really manifest this incredible vision one of these days. And uh, then recently uh, to really, you know, do something, you know, uh, that was really more fun and not really be focused on the pandemic. I bought this beautiful 1928 Spanish hacienda uh, that's just really kind of uh, five minutes away from the cedars. And I'm refurbishing that. And that is really going to be the first Su Wong uh, signature designer home uh, because that's what I'm going into. I actually, you know, retired from fashion about three years ago uh, because I had really done it for decades and I really had made my fortune. I really was very, very successful because I was designing professionally since I was 19 years old. And it had no longer become a challenge because, you know, after decades of doing fashion, I really wanted another modality of expression. So I decided, OK, I'm going to go into Su Wong designer homes, signature homes, um, because I have a very identifiable uh, signature. I mean, you know, when I was doing clothes, if my clothes were on display on the floor at Neiman Marcus or Bloomingdale's or, you know, Saks Fifth Avenue, all of the uh, all of those were my top accounts because I sold to all of the top boutiques, the top department stores, as well as to 27 different countries throughout the world. But if, you know, one of them had my gown on display, you could really see right across to the opposite you know, side of the room where the mannequin was on display and people would say that is a Su Wong, you know, so I want to now do homes that also really bear my signature of uh, glamour, of beauty, of magic, you know, because my, my mantra is beauty, magic, transformation, because what I stand for and what I create is beauty and the alchemy of beauty in itself is really magical and the magic you know of my creations really have the power to transform because that's what beauty and magic does so when a woman you know would put on a su wong she would be magically transformed into this goddess and when i was really doing fashion that basically was really my mission is to really connect women with her feminine with their feminine divine you know that sort of like eternal feminine element which was really honored through my clothes because they were quintessentially feminine romantic beautiful evocative of the 1920s 1930s 1940s or of the victorian era because I think at my core, I'm one of these, you know, like uh, diehard, hopeless romantics, you know. So so I've always gravitated towards the era of the 1920s and 1930s. And of course, I owned a quintessential 1920s glamorous Hollywood home, the Cedars. That is amazing. Just about what era would you live in? But I think you answered that question very well. And when I think about all the homes you have and all the work you put in and the clothes and everything, I I said to myself, wow, that is <laughs> very amazing. I got to say that. Very amazing. Thank you. Well, so, so eventually this will also morph into Su Wong Boutique Hotels, but I'm starting with the signature homes. And, uh, you know, I, I have other huge projects that I'm doing. I think I mentioned, you know, I'm establishing the Su Wong Legacy Foundation. So uh, on top of really bequeathing the, the cedars, I have really archived over 11,000 of my favorite designs in the last 20 years. So along with that will be all of my library of, um, of uh, original sketches and all my original swatches that I created, you know, for my motifs. So I'm going to be starting the Su Wong Fashion Museum. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> and, th and that will be like uh, perhaps an adjunct museum uh, to the Cedars. But, uh, you know, I have some really glorious, you know, museum pieces. And as a matter of fact, many of them are considered to be really works of art. And as a matter of fact, uh, back in uh, February, the, the beginning of February, 
I was really the featured artist uh, for the L.A. Art Show. And the L.A. Art Show gave me this really incredible booth that was probably like 2,000 square feet. And I was placed right in, you know, uh, front and center. And I showed over 70 of my iconic pieces on mannequins, both inside and all around the booth. And I had huge posters, <coughs> excuse me, of my work blown up. And it was just really a spectacular art fashion installation. So what I'm going to do with the museum is that, you know, I hope to really inspire future uh, generations of fashion designers long after I'm gone because, you know, my library will be made available to them. Uh, my uh, 11,000 uh, piece library of uh, archival samples, you know, and uh, hopefully there will be residency programs set up, you know, for work study and uh, residency for future um, budding fashion designers from all over the world because very few designers really have my stamina or my track record of really being, you know, on the scene, uh, actively engaged for 50 years, actually. You know, I started out when I was very young in, in uh, fashion as a teenager already. So I have this really vast um, um, knowledge, you know, so... Uh, you might say that I have probably several degrees or several PhDs in, in fashion or in the visual arts because I don't really consider myself to just be uh, to being a fashion designer. I actually am a visual artist and I consider myself to be a creative intuitive because intuitively I can do so many different things such as really design, you know, homes, design furniture, design gardens, you know, design floral arrangements, um, you know, uh, art direct a, 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 a photo shoot, um, basically uh, call a fashion show together. Uh, I also do writing, you know, I, I do a number of different things, but it's all from here, you know, because it's not the type of knowledge or wisdom that you can go to school and learn. I mean, all of this is really inborn knowledge. And I have a theory, if you believe in the concept, let's say, of reincarnation, you know, I've been basically an artist, a creative artist in many different disciplines over many different lifetimes. So that's why I can really tap into my DNA memory, so to speak, and all this knowledge really comes to me, including fashion design. I had never really designed um, uh, evening gowns before, for instance, but, you know, over 20 years ago, I, you know, uh, fell upon a fluke and I taught myself how to do uh, design evening clothing in one season. So you don't really do that unless you really have this sort of higher knowledge that is contained within yourself, you know, so it's, it's a soul knowledge or a soul quality that I'm happy to have. That is amazing. I mean, all the stuff you accomplished is just amazing. And one more question. What haven't you? I'm sorry. I, I guess another question I had when you were around the accomplishments what haven't you done yet? <laughs> well, I'm also going to make a movie of my life, you know, and it's going to be called Red Lotus. Red is a sacred color to the Chinese. It represents life. Lotus is actually my Chinese namesake. My uh, Chinese name is Huang, you know, uh, in Mandarin, Huang is uh, pronounced uh, Huang, uh, which means royal. And then Su is shell in, in Mandarin. It means, um, you know, elegant. And then Lin is the lotus flower. So my Chinese name translated is royal elegant lotus. So basically I'm going to really make a movie of my life because I have really one of those transformative uh, stories, which basically I'm totally self-made. I came from less than nothing you know, growing up in Maoist China up to age five and a half. And, uh, you know, my grandmother would chase rats around 
the house. And that's how I really survived because it was scarcity and there was nothing after the revolution. There was famine, there was hunger, there was starvation. So then at uh, age uh, five and a half, my mother and I, uh, she took a great leap of faith by trading in her wedding jewelry sewn into a pillow and handing it to the border guard who released us to safety. And we had relatives on the other side in Hong Kong taking us uh, in. So we lived there for about a year before um, my father petitioned for us to come here. And I met my father for the first time when I came to America because my mother was pregnant with me and she couldn't travel. So, you know, uh, Right before the revolution um, was, uh, b- before the People's Republic of China was declared, he quickly fled and came back to America. And subsequently, China closed his doors. My little grandmother, whom you know I love dearly, and my mother and I were trapped. You know, so we really literally had to escape. You know, I grew up in the ghetto, you know. So, you know, I, I think with the perseverance and, and will, I believe that you can really create the destiny of its of your your dreams of, of your choice. So that's what I did. So I don't really want to hear, you know, uh, stories about people just really being defeated because they really you know, grew up in adverse circumstances. I certainly did, you know. Um, My father uh, finally built his uh, business in Culver City. And, uh, you know, so uh, I grew up in uh, suburbia. But, you know, downstairs was the business. And upstairs, we lived in a little uh, apartment. And that's how I grew up, helping my parents work in their Chinese laundry until I was 16. And then I, you know, got into fashion by being chosen of, uh, to represent my high school for the May Company Teen Board. So, you know, I originally wanted to be a fine artist, but my parents would have, you know, nothing to do with that. So I went into fashion as a sideline. But I don't really have any regrets because it's been a great career for me. It always challenges uh, me uh, at my creativity and it really fueled the creative fire that I've always had. And, and, and just a few minutes with Sue Wong here on the Mike Wagner Show, iconic fashion designer and also working on the Cedar Project. And who do you consider biggest influence in your career? I don't know. I know who was really a big influence for me, um, you know, in life. Um to really have the kind of wisdom that I have now at my age. Um, I would say, you know, creatively, maybe uh, the artist friend of mine by the name of Tomito Keikos, who basically passed away now, but he was really the first um, artist who basically awakened the artist in myself. And then in terms of t- teachers, there were two 20th century teachers that are very important to me. And one is Carl Jung, you know, who basically, uh, you know, uh, founded Jungian analysis. And the other one is Joseph Campbell. So Joseph Campbell taught follow your bliss and uh, everything else will really fall into place. And that's what I did. And so I, when I set out early in life, I didn't really set out to really be the most successful or the most wealthy fashion designer, but I wanted to be the best fashion designer. And so that's what I did. I basically lived my art and in a way my life has been my art and my art has really been my life. So you could really say that I'm really, you know, a pure artist through and through. And that's really (laughs) the enlivened life, the passionate life and the awakened life. And that's the way I like to live. And that is the advice and give the eight point. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. And once again, Sue Wong, iconic fashion designer and also working at Sears Project and her Mike Wagner show. A big thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. Looking thank forward you, to Mike. 2020. And just a few more things. Tell us once again your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact you? And where can people uh, check out your works or even say or purchase or just check out? Well, I'm uh, very active on Facebook. 
you know, I have a really unique Facebook. It's uh, Sue Wong Fashion. You know, my personal page is very alive. I post uh, on philosophy, on spirituality, on fashion, on beauty, on architecture, um, on cinema, on literature, on anything that really floats my boat. But anything to do with culture and beauty, that's what I'm really drawn to. Uh, my Instagram is also Sue Wong uh, Fashion. And you can also really go on my website to see the celebrities that I've dressed, to see examples of my work. And that's basically suewong.com. That's fantastic. Hey, thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. Looking thank forward you. to coming soon. And do keep this up to date. Love you have back on 2020 and beyond. You've been fantastic. Thank you, Mike. And thank you for having me on your show. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds whether big, small, established or startup impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show. 